Thank you. Howdy! This is the Vatican with Steven Zadigoska, George, <laughs> if you're never ready, and Elliot Morgan, and that's with two O's and two N's. And now for the violin solo. Is this that guy again? This is that guy again. Who is this? Enjoy. Wow. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> that was submitted by Bogus Nancy. Bogus? Wow, what a name. And it's called Valleycast Intro Submission Numero Uno. Well, actually, it says Van- Valleycast Intro Submission titled, I've had this idea for five months and only followed through once I became sleep deprived. Well, thanks. five months he's been sitting on that gold. <laughs> he says, thanks, it's not good. Uh, I love it. I have yeah. found that um, someone mispronouncing, <laughs> we talked about this a little on the tour, which we're going to get to in a second, somebody mispronouncing words. A little mispronunciation is, just is funny. nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun and time. it makes me feel like I'm di- like regressing in my sense of humor. But I don't think I am. I think it's just no. good, clean. It's you're just silly. broadening. Is broadening, all you're doing. Yeah, yeah. It's, you're not not like enjoying some of the other stuff. It's a very basic. It's yeah. silly, clean, good fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, w- I did that during the the Cold Stone sketch for the most part, and it always got a laugh at some point. But then I just forgot on the last time we did it, where wait, I would wait. say. Um, oh no! Uh, for Colin Farrell's shirt, where I would say uh, Colin like that, he <laughs> yeah. could be making love with swooper models, or yeah. something like that. Swooper, super, Swo- super yeah. swooper models, super models. <laughs> yeah, it was really That's fun. A fun time. Um, <laughs> man, there's so many things that just popped into my brain right now. To uh, um, just go for it, buddy. Okay, well, well, the one is that we finally got our examples of our merch in our new merch. <laughs> So if you look what we're wearing, if you're looking at the video podcast, uh, this is the new uh, full logo shirt, which we've never had. It's on green. It's um, cool. What else is it on, Joe? Oh, well, let me take off my clothes. Uh, oh, no, that's uh, too much boom. white. This is the speckly one, the, uh, the wire uh, logo shirt. The black shirt. speckly. Yeah. I'm wearing it right now myself. Which is really cool because I thought it was like sparkle spe- speckles, but they're colored. They're like little color speckles. I love yeah. it. This is my favorite one so far. It's like it's a Muppet Steve's blew his brains too. out in front of you. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> This is your favorite one, right? I love it. Yeah. And Big take, fan. Take this off, and this is my favorite. It's the rust color one, and we have a bunch <laughs> of new shirts, so go check them out. The The old school blue one is still available as well. And uh, speaking of merch, before we move on, uh, the last couple days right now when you're hearing this uh, to get your eggs pin, and then it's gone. So Yeah, get it um, while it's there, and, now it, and then it ain't. And then it ain't. So it's like three days left, and then we have our February pin, which some of you know what it's going to be, but we're gonna, not going to tell you and t- until the video comes out next time. Yeah, speaking of who might know, it's people we were on uh, who, who came to our shows on our tour, and that's kind of like what our subjects for this podcast is going to be. Yeah. We're just going to talk about we'll our tour. We'll probably talk about that a lot. A, a lot. And then, uh, you know, if you want to talk Ooh. about something else, you can. I want to talk about, There's some... at some point, before I forget, someone needs to make me a cannibal for this, because I really want to talk about- Make you a cannibal? Make, you a make can... me a cannibal, what please. What is that? What? I said, man, I said <laughs> what? Make, make me you... accountable. Why? No, you said but, make me but, a cannibal. You snuck in the cannibal yeah, thing, man. for sure. Wait, did you just- All right, fine, I'm a cannibal. I'm <laughs> trying you. to admit it Thank to you, you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. God dang it, man. I ate Alana last night <laughs> real good. She's dead. You're a cannibal toward your significant others? That's how you... Well, I, I don't discriminate as a cannibal. You just eat who you... Who you eat when you're hungry. Eat when you're hungry, yeah. Yeah, and you stop when you're full. It's called limits. I still want not <laughs> someone I know. But I know, we're it different. sucks. We're I different. Hate, but you know I where your food it. comes from if you eat somebody you know. That's true. Yeah. I, a... Based on the people I know, though, yeah. I stand by <laughs> There. Well, if you're not a cannibal, then... You know, if I I wasn't gonna eat another cannibal, accountable a cannibal, the accountable. Oh, cannibal. so you do you do discriminate then? <laughs> That's it. Uh, um, what's your what were you accountable? For? Uh, well, remember there was a flight where it was like this captain's last flight. Oh uh-huh. yeah, that was very. And sweet. it was like really sweet, and they gave us these pamphlets, and it was like this whole thing. And uh, but man, I was so nervous because I was like, man, this is like in the movie when they're like, yeah, I knew you were flight. thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, context. So we get on this flight, and like we have some older um, uh, flight attendants and stuff, and you're like, "Huh? Oh, well, they all they all seem like something special's going on." Mm-hmm. And then they're all like, "Well, welcome to the flight. This is Ke- let's call them Ron." It wasn't just that. There were so wrong. many people on standby. There was a whole crew yeah. of people, and then the, they were giving hugs to the yeah. pilot. And I was like, oh, "Okay." They're yeah, like, right. "Captain Ron. This is Captain Ron's last flight. Uh, he's been a pilot for 20 years." <laughs> and they were handing out uh, pamphlets to us, just like. It was Card like stock story. Yeah, it was his story, it was but sweet. it wasn't on normal paper. It, it was, was like on, marbled. Pu- yeah, it was cardstock. Like resume <laughs> paper. Fixed stuff. Yeah. The good yeah. stuff. It was like a certificate. Uh huh. 
paper. And we were like, we we accidentally stumbled into this man's like really emotional life moment. Like yeah. the the flight attendants were really um, emotional about it. And yeah, the, the the woman that was like the main flight attendant was like, I was on Captain Ron's <laughs> first, first flight. flight. Yeah. Like Which over, was from uh, this was from Spokane, Spokane to, to Tacoma, Seattle. and yeah. his first flight had been from Tacoma to, or Seattle. To Seattle, yeah, yeah. So, how does that work? Is that like does he was going to get back on that plane to go back, but he wasn't going to fly it? Probably, yeah. I have no idea. So he he was redoing or maybe he his just first stays flight where he were in Spokane forever, mm-hmm. or in Seattle. In Seattle, they're yeah. like sucker, you're here. Um, yeah, so his first <laughs> flight ever was Spokane to Seattle. So for his last flight ever, he did Spokane to Seattle, and his family was on board. Yeah, his and whole everybody family was there, and which it was, was really comforting. sweet. And yeah, because then it you was were comforting like, his whole family was there. Because all I was thinking though, because they announced that before we even got on the plane, Dude, the the flight attendant was like. You could hear the frog in her throat the whole time. Yeah. Like she wanted to ball. <laughs> yeah, well, the crazy um, part. but that started to feel to me. I was sitting behind you guys, and I was texting Grace, and I was like starting to like lose it a little she, bit because I was cracking up because it sounded like an SNL sketch at the end because she kept going. She and went going on and for going. a very long time. It was so long. It was comically long. Yeah, and it was comically sentimental the entire time. It was really sweet, but it it dipped into absurd well, and that, then back into. But sweet. that's what happens when you accidentally stumble into somebody's well, emotional moment. Yeah, imagine like, you're not a part of that. Imagine like, oh, oh God, I tripped over my feet and now I'm at this like police chief's like, 50 retirement. year retirement party and you're just yeah. like listening to everything because you're not connected I bet to the it was words. free drinks if we, had, if we, weren't, if we weren't on uh, Dry January. Yeah, that's true. On those they usually give. Yeah, I mean, obviously, freebies. you know, if it was like your dad, you'd be like, fuck yeah, I'm all about this. I mm-hmm. want to hear what everything this woman has to say. But we had no connection to no, it. No, which is, yeah. So we were just kind of like listening and listening. I mean, it, she it's just also went right on after and the on plane lands. On. So everyone's just like holding their seatbelt ready to. Yeah, yeah. But it was just like, it was so nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when they announced it, I was like, I know exactly what Steve's Well, thinking. it was just, because I'm just, I'm in this. I'm in such a like a hell hole. Like on on the tour, I was in such a hell hole of anxiety that that was just exacerbated by all of the flights, pretty much. So it was just like any time. I mean, and it just like a movie. <laughs> like something had to be added about every flight we were on. And then there was like our la- <laughs> our last flight. <laughs> was it our last one? Yeah, where we last were in- one together. The- what was the the captain one? Was the last one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was the what was the one where it was just the three of us in an Uber and the fucking Uber guy was like, "Oh, your plane's gonna be like this, man." That was <laughs> out of uh, like, Salt Lake, I think. Yeah. It was yeah. like there was just some. I just was, couldn't uh, escape. French I hope guy. you're ready for the worst flight ever. Well, yeah, yeah, he was basically he just kept bringing it up too, and I'm like, and I was right in the middle of how sick I am too, and I was just like. But thankfully, I was so sick that I was too concerned about my illness to really be too afraid of the flight. But, but man, that fucking uh, <laughs> that that uh, that when they announced that it was the guy's last flight. Yeah, what was your in first the thought? airport? I was like, oh god! <laughs> I was like, this is it, man. This motherfucker's like, I'm fucking doing it. I've been dreaming of taking a plane down, and I'm oh. doing it on my retirement, motherfucker. This is how I'm going out. They're forcing like, me to retire. Yeah, they're forcing me to retire. That's what all, all I could think of is like the stupid movie thing where it's like, I'm about to retire. I knew you were filling the narrative in with the worst <laughs> shit. I knew it. Because I was. I was just in this fucking spiral. And then we get on the plane, and the guy's like, my whole family's here. And I'm like, okay, we're good. Yeah. And I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> my bitch ex-wife even showed up. <laughs> my ex-boss. Uh, that but, kid from high school I hated. Yeah. They're all here. But I've never been on a flight like that where they're just like um, celebrating and it's like a big old big yeah, deal. I it guess. was cute. I wish there was more of a celebration than just words like Elliot was saying because it was a lot of words. <laughs> I, I didn't mind it because, I mean, we were on the plane anyway. It's not like the words kept us from getting oh, I did. off or something. <laughs> it was I sweet. definitely didn't mind it. it super yeah, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, you All were right, just anyway. cracking up. I was, yeah, I felt bad, but I was, it was very Anyways, sweet. we made it very unless sweet. we're ghosts and we don't realize it yet. I still feel weird pain, so yeah, okay, unless you're, you're a ghost when you're in pain, <laughs> you're in pain still as a ghost. Uh, go ahead, man. Let's talk about, let's just uh, fucking jump right in then, huh? First of all, uh, yeah, thank you to everybody yes. who came. Yeah. Um, it was five, I think, very successful shows in their own ways. And uh, yeah, everybody was so sweet, and thank you for saying hi afterward, and thanks for letting us make silly jokes. 
that sometimes got some uh, uh, um, chuckles, ooze, and some uh, cr- uh, the oh that oh <laughs> all those sounds the ooze the the, ahs, the ones that the go ooh. oh yeah which oh. felt yeah that was very fun yeah. um but yeah ev- thank you for everybody who came out it was very invigorating uh, so we started in San Francisco and that was the most unique spot on the trip because we were uh this was part of the San Francisco sketch fest and this wasn't us just going to clubs and doing not stand up and stand up. It was the most nerve-wracking show, I think, of all of them. I think so because we didn't quite know what they expected and it was also the biggest stage. It was this huge beautiful theater, it was the Brava in mm-hmm. San Francisco and it was one of those ones where you walk in and there's like art deco everywhere. It was like a 1920s yeah. like theater. But so. the lights are on too, Vaudeville. so you're mm-hmm. seeing like the white uh background of the stage, like it's got blues and pinks on it and you're like, "Ooh, this feels legit and good." And I hope we're legit and good. Well, it was the only like, um, like theater stop on the whole tour. It was the rest the most, were clubs. It was the yep. highest stakes show professionally was... with the least amount of rehearsal yet because yeah. we hadn't performed any of that stuff. Yep. And I, I, and strangely though, because at when now that we like kind of reflect, or now that I reflect on it, it's like maybe it was even the lowest stakes show at the end of the day. Just like perfe- with um, potential for outside industry because it was sketch fest that's the only yeah. reason i would think that there might be like higher stakes but it's like but in terms of like pe- like demand for like putting on a show yeah for sure because we were sharing the yeah. stage with uh, chris and paul who yeah. are just you know they're 10 out of 10 performers mm-hmm. like they're just the best i'm glad we got to see them it was funny because i think we were meant to be like the the um I think initially we were going to go It was like last. Chris and Paul was going to open for us, yeah. And then- uh, But they asked us, and we were like, they should go after us! <laughs> like, instantly we were like, no, no. Well, he was like, well, they have a big mess that they're going to make, which, by the way, we <laughs> we bent over backwards to not make a mess. Little things are like, ooh, we don't know if we want a little bit of confetti on the stage. We're like, good, it's cut. They're like, ooh, we don't want we don't want ooh, you no to baby maybe powder. accidentally break an egg on stage. We're like, okay, eggs, gone. They're... We have some baby powder. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Okay, powder. we'll do the baby powder, but that's it. And we're like, okay, we but will alter everything. <laughs> Chris and Paul are also- being a little bit of baby powder. No, it was a lot of baby powder. <laughs> but Chris and Paul are also just like good at what they do, and they've been doing it for so long that they're like, milk, cookies, doing it. The theater's like, eh, and they're like, nah, brought a rug, doing it. Did you <laughs> and hear, then they did uh, it. Did you hear Chris talk about the balloons? How they got them stuck? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because they they there's a bit they do where they have these balloons that like f- they're supposed to only float up like a little bit and then they can like catch them, but they these went all the way up to the lights <laughs> and I guess yeah. like the the theater people were like freaking out. They about were not it, happy. And they were like they had to get up on cranes to to get it down. And Chris was like, I felt so bad. Oh, that were, sucks. Were, <laughs> but it was so funny. Whatever. I cracked up. Dude, yeah. yeah. Let's uh, pardon my goosh. I'm gonna, let's goosh. I'm going to goosh over them for let's, a bit. Let's have a goosh, a Man, moment of Talk goosh. about two dudes that are just, they have it down to a science, <laughs> what they do. And it's so good, and it's so playful and, and brave. They bring people out of the audience, and it's it's like, it, it, they're so good at what they do that the people they bring out of the audience feel like plants. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this person obviously rehearsed with them, and that's not it's the part of the is. science of yeah. picking someone that, that looks like they'll play, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or just being able to play with anybody that you bring I up on stage. I guess that's true, like, too. They're yeah. just so freaking good at it. They're very in control of yeah. everything, too. <laughs> like, the, they're in control of the crowd, they're in control of their own bodies, like, the physicality that they do mm-hmm. is crazy. And it's, it's just great. Over, it's over the top and big, you know? They're getting on in years, too, and they're not holding back. They're just we, going for it. on the other hand, in terms of tightness, our show, our part of the San Francisco show, we didn't repeat this for the other ones, but it ends with like a hot take that like is very dumb that is fine. And then, but for the guest for hot take, we invite out the incomprehensible cowboy, who I introduced the hot take as Elliot C. Morgan as a reference from for the study. And then when we ran through it for the first time, the s- amount of baby powder I snorted. Um, and squeezed into my face was so much that I almost couldn't say any lines. And then Steve came out as the incomprehensible cowboy, snorted that amount of baby powder, and then so it much. went even worse into your yeah. thing, to the point that I thought it might just. I was like, oh, this this might be the end of the the yeah. entire sketch. But my, you you my, managed. Uh, my lungs were filled with yeah. baby powder. It was so much. Yeah, it was a dumb thing to do. It was so dumb. <laughs> yeah, that's why you do that on camera. Yeah. 
might have ruined the Ben Franklin jacket with baby powder. <laughs> but, Can you ruin some of baby powder? Probably I mean, made it, it just cleaner. won't come out. It's like you you smack it and it just stays. Well, that's just that you just that's gave just it character. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah I guess that's true. Just gave it a little it bit has of a little more love. But, Wait, one more thing I want to say about Chris and Paul really quick, which yeah. was uh, the, the when we got there, the woman that that showed us around said that it was like a vaudeville stage. That we were performing on mm-hmm. that 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 theater like held like well, like it was yeah, a vaudeville old school theater. started as a vaudeville yeah and, uh, built by Jonathan vaudeville Jonathan vaudeville yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, seeing Chris and Paul do essentially modern vaudeville Ugh. there was like kind of a really fun experience it's very it, cool yeah it was almost like. Uh, what it must have been like to watch vaudeville there way back in the day. Sort. Except for it would have been black and white back then. Yeah, everyone yeah. was. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I think I don't think I'm going out on a limb, but I, I feel like they're so unique. I don't. I mean, I can't maybe there's people really, out yeah. there doing something similar, but I don't know who they are, and I haven't seen it for in forever. What they do is so special and so unique, and again, so on point. If you get a chance and you see Chris and Paul performing anywhere, you gotta go. Yeah, you, you just gotta look make them the up. Trip. Just follow them on Twitter and shit, and and uh, if they're near you at all, definitely make the journey. And it's creative too. That balloon sketch, <laughs> I lost it. Did you like? You had I lost no it. clue it was going there, right? No, mm. I know. I'm, but I'm mm. also an easy. I'm an easy target. <laughs> we all. Were, yeah, I don't we have any. Do you remember the one where they were, <laughs> where they were like going back and forth with this lady and with giving her volunteer. nice things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta go. We're talking about things as if you were there. You weren't. Right. You gotta go. Anyway, all right. Enough. Um, enough. Dude, <laughs> do you enough remember the, uh, the Brava Theater? So, like you said, it was old as hell. It's one of those ones where it's like you go into the basement, and the basement is basically just the hole in the ground with the cement walls. But mm-hmm. it's more like old school rock from the 1910s. So scary. We put our hands on the wall, and the thing was just rumbling. Oh, rumbling. Yeah. Yeah. Like the thing has a heartbeat. Or yeah. Something. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. The Bravo Theater in San Francisco. There was is another. Alive. The was it the Denver location also had like original rock work and stuff like that inside. It's like the oldest building in downtown yep. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, saying that as well. And that, that that all that rock work behind us, they said was like original. Like mm-hmm. it's been there since whatever. Um, since they founded. Before we Indiana Jones our plane on the map to to Denver. <laughs> any other? I know we're San jumping Francisco so far. Thoughts? Like uh, the robot in San Francisco, we discovered that was real fun. Oh yeah, well that was San Francisco was great because we got an opportunity to kind of relax before the show, and we had like a whole day. Got some good Irish food. Well, we had a great Irish food. We went to a pub, and then we went to the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh yeah, that was really fun. Yeah, it was so was nice, nice and very fun. Um, and then uh, we did a lot of rehearsing on the roof of that hotel, which was really cool. Beautiful, yeah. We scenery. got some fun footage from that. Yeah, we got a lot of footage. Mm-hmm. We should, we should. Hopefully, the, uh, we'll release that at some point. These boys were very kind and indulged me. I was like, I don't really want to do anything else in San Francisco. I just want to get an Uber and drive across the bridge because I never done that. I'd never done it either. It's an easy sell. Yeah, and they did, and we all did. And it was really fun. We go yeah. to the other side, and then we start taking pictures. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> of uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, and we get on this little like rock stone wall, and we're doing our cute little boy pictures and couples pictures and stuff like that, which you can see on our Instagrams. And then we start doing some jumping photos and jumping videos, and I go, "Oh, I got an idea!" And I completely forgot that we were in a space filled with hundreds of other people, and not uh-huh. just us. But we got kind of lost in our own little world, and I felt like. <laughs> We existed in our bubble again. I was like, guys, I got an idea. Let me do this. And I wanted to do this thing where I jump really high and f- pretend like I mess up and fall off of the wall. And I do it. And I do it well. It's done totally fine. It was very believable. And then I fall off so of the back believable. side of this wall, which is next to, I wouldn't say a cliff, but like a, it, you would think it's a cliff on the other if side. If you kept going, you would have yeah. had a bad time. It's a, it's a very steep hill. But it's not like you could fall off this wall and be totally fine. But uh, you can't tell when you're on the other side. Well, there's parts of it where you'll <laughs> <Yeah>. be fine. <laughs> so I uh, prat fall off of this freaking stone wall, and like, <laughs> what, five, six people jumped to save my life. They were all too slow, but they jumped to save my life. Yeah, they did. And then, and then instantly became upset. <laughs> That, yeah. that you uh, were fucking around. Man, I yeah. remember looking, uh, that happened, and I just remember five seconds later being like, oh, wow, I'm so much further away from Joe than I just was. Like, the <laughs> amount of time, the moment it happened, I was like, I don't know him. I don't know who he is. I don't know that man. Yeah, that guy next to us, that like he, he reached out, he extended his arm. I yeah. saw that when I popped up. I saw him go from complete concern to, I'm going to beat the shit out of you if you were my kid. Yeah. 
He was not happy. Because yeah. there were people that watched you die, essentially. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then and didn't realize it. Uh, but what I did is <laughs> I, I gave, I gave them all funny. hope that, you know, good things happen. Yeah. That's what I did. You should have you should have come up and and just been like, and that's why you never play around on stone walls. Just start doing a, an infomercial in front of uh-huh. everybody. Hi, my name's Joe. You thought I just died today. Well, guess what? I didn't. I work for the city of San Francisco, <laughs> and I do this every couple of hours. Bob, over here. <laughs> and all the king's horses, and all the king's men. <laughs> Could you imagine if they had, that was a service they had? Oh they just, my God. Where you just daily, hourly for tourists, you just scare the shit out of them. Get hit by a car at a crosswalk. Yeah. And this is why we don't jaywalk. You look both ways when you walk, everyone. Uh, Joe, I'm looking through your resume here, and it looks like you know, you're know you really good for this job, and I'm really impressed by um, a lot of the things on here. But I do have a question. What is this guy who falls off of San Francisco rock wall near the Golden Gate bridge job what was that oh what just that to teach lessons <laughs> i'm a teacher at heart <laughs> i'm just a <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah so that was that was san fran that was a uh, that was great saw some good uh some good people yeah thank you to everybody that came out people stuck around and we said yeah. hi and we took some photos and stuff and that was really fun mm-hmm. that was our least i don't want to say least attended but the least like valley folky contingent mm-hmm. crowd which after the show we were like did we do good and we made you know there were laughs it was good maybe not quite what we expected for some of the insidey jokes but then we woke up the next day and we're like yeah because it that was the san francisco sketch fest crowd not so much our crowd and then we indiana jones did to, <laughs> to denver. denver to denver which was my first time to denver beautiful right gorgeous oh, man. gorgeous man beautiful weather Yep. Beautiful city. Perfect. I've never been in that area downtown, and it was very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like deep, deep downtown. Super clean. Like I, I have a feeling like during the summer months, a little bit more, I don't want to say lively, live because it's not like it, it wasn't lively, but that's because it was a Monday. Yeah. It They're was, blending together a little bit. Give me some, give me some. Denver is like the low ceiling, very intimate crowd. Very no, no, no. The theaters, crowd. I remember, but like, what, where, where like, where did we, we stay? Ate at, oh, I have no the idea. The Curtis. We stayed at the Curtis. It was that one that was under. Oh, the Curtis. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah, we yeah. ate at that. And um, you guys stayed at that fucking crazy loft. Yeah, the ho- the lo- the comedy yeah, loft. Yeah, that that was cool. That was very cool. That was the coolest place we stayed in. Yeah, yeah. the Curtis was cool and too. The silliest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all the hotels were very cool. Every yeah. floor of the Curtis has like some like kind of theme. theme. Yeah, I was so bummed out because I didn't even know that our our floor had like Peyton Manning and like fucking Denver oh, really? Broncos shit everywhere, and I was like, okay, cool. And then I was riding the elevator, and someone got off on a floor below mine, and it was like uh, like Captain America shields and like Avengers stuff, and like yeah, Peyton Manning, Iron the, Man's the Broncos. Mask. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And then there was another floor with like Pac Man all over the wall and stuff. It was a really cool um, hotel, and then the the People that worked there were super nice too. Everyone in Denver was. You know, Everyone, really nice. yeah. Mm-hmm. And what was the... that diner we ate at? Do you remember Big? I don't remember the name of it. Yeah, oh yeah. I don't remember. Yep. Some famous diner by the. It by was the a. Curtis. It was a diners, yeah. drive-ins, and dives or something. Yeah. Or like a man versus food. Place. One of those places where you're like, I'm gonna get a food, and we realize swiftly that we all could have just shared one plate yeah. because <laughs> it was like, we use ate, your food. I don't think we'd eaten in a while at that. Point. It, yeah, yeah I, I, it was a good meal. Um, but and then it was like a taste of the cold to come too, because it was like pretty chilly. Mm-hmm. And I remember one night. Uh, Elliot and Alana and I took a walk and we saw that giant bear looking yeah. into the convention center, which was super cool. Yeah. And uh, I took a little walk in the morning around the neighborhood, which was like, it's just beautiful. I loved the yep. weather and I loved that. Something that I noticed right away was that clean mountain air yeah. that, that just that like crisp punch ugh, to the face. It's like you just, ugh. you take a deep breath and it just feels like your lungs are filled with like clean, fresh, cold nice, yeah. air. It's, it's just like such a nice pressing feeling. Pressing reset on your it insides. It really is. It just reminds you that there's there are some places where the atmosphere is just a little wakes you nicer. Up. Yeah, it wakes you up real quick too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Come on. And okay. then we went to the fucking venue, and lo and behold, one Mister Michael Buckley. Yeah. yeah we had some, came. He, uh, some he showed up and hung out with us backstage for a bit. And gave us some pep co- talks. Gave us yeah. a pep talk. Life coached us backstage, and then life coached us on stage. <laughs> I know. I love him so much. He's very good. I lo- he basically preached at the end, which was my favorite part. Which of was show. really nice too. Yeah. I feel like I really appreciated. We were so just self. Listening. We were so self-deprecating that he he got up and did his thing and it was very like 
Oh, that's like hearing it from someone else is very yeah. Well, and very he's nice. so good. He can command an audience so well, and he's just got that energy and that he, charisma. He's so smart, and he's so pointed, and he and he 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 has. It's it's almost like he's. He was just made to be like a motivational speaker, I yeah. guess. He's just built that way. I would describe him as, he ain't got no time for your bull crap. Like, no, if you're feeling bad about yourself, he's like, nah, stop it. Don't be dumb. Just, you gotta, I, nope. Yeah, I mean, you can tell he's been through some shit, and he's, uh, he's, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's living his he's, best. He's life living his best in, fucking life in Denver. He's playing flag football and a bunch of Soccer other sports that he never stuff. thought he would play before. Um, the Denver crowd, shout out to y'all. Everyone um, was great. Man, rowdy. Rowdy was a good way to describe Great that crowd. show. I don't know if that was alcohol and or weed, but yeah, the, or that intimate. It was like we was were perfect. performing in a in a in a hamburger. Setting wise, <laughs> it was perfect. Like the the ceiling was so low, and it was great, and it was like we were all in like some kid's basement together, well, just hanging the, out. The club was great too because <laughs> when we gave them our fucking tedious set or our uh, ch- uh, tech sheet and tech yeah. assets, which we. We we proudly exited our comfortable studio in Sherman Oaks with with our tech requirements and dropped it on these poor people <laughs> that were not equipped for our fucking tech needs. Uh, but they were they nailed it. Denver I mean, nailed they it. nailed it, yeah, and they it. and it's so funny because we made the realization in that show that the file I made that introduces us for our <laughs> yeah. intro bit says. Uh, for the, in, first, for time the first time performing in, in San, San Francisco. Francisco. <laughs> so we had the ask every show to the VO guy to say the name of the city, and which they was did funny. It sometimes. <laughs> but, Two but Denver out of four. did it. Denver did it so well because the guy just comes on and goes, Denver. Denver. He, got <laughs> <it>. <laughs> he nailed it. He knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. And then the audience immediately laughs and we we're like, oh, yeah, we're going to be fine. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, yeah. Totally was like performing in a in a hamburger, in, in, <laughs> which was really cool. But everybody was so great, and it's such a great crowd. Yeah, shout and out to the Denver crowd. Afterwards, um, we were in the stairwell saying goodbye to everybody, and we made our rounds. And then th- that was a really fun uh, kind of like meet and greet, I guess. Outside. Yeah, we yeah. saw our other friend from the YouTube, your uh, Bob Jens, from Bob Jens, Wicked Awesome Films, and his lovely and wife, his wife from uh, also. Um, uh, annoying Orange World and all that. And mm-hmm. It's good to see him too. Good people, yeah. yeah. A gentleman like... by uh, the name of Ben, I think. I might be remembering his name wrong, but I think it was Ben. If not, sorry, Ben. Uh, but he gave me a painting that he had made of yeah, an Instagram story. Yeah, it was beautiful. It's very beautiful. Yeah, because I'm in the my kitchen. I have a painting that my dad made of the lake house that they no longer have. And then this uh, gentleman gave me the the sunset of like the beach where they live now. Like this is like a nice. Poetic, it was like a beautiful photo. That thing art. was so it was beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. He took yeah. it from yeah, like an Instagram story that I'd done, and I guess just to, and it was so it's so nice. It's very pretty. so it's decorating my home now, which is very nice. Um, uh, shout out to a couple things: my friend Larice and her husband Mike, and my friend from college Brian, who came out to the show. Larice, oh, nice. or as we tried to remember her name, Marissa. Marissa, <laughs> very close. <laughs> okay, we right. uh, we met her, and then immediately right. forgot her name in Denver, and then uh, realized we were those people. That was one of those like, oh, I haven't got to see this person for like 10 years thing so it was a, that was the nicest thing for the tour for me is that i got to like see a bunch of friends because it was kind of my stomping ground which was you don't really often nice. get to see people you haven't seen in 10 years what did you feel that they changed or that they were exactly no same it was or? one of those friendships that it's like oh we just picked up where we left yeah. off type of thing just easy conversations and that's great so that was very nice same with brian we went for a hike and we went uh and hiked up above the red rocks and that was freaking stunningly beautiful that's awesome it was so that. nice that was this was the first trip uh, as we talked about that i worked out in hotel gyms which i've yeah. never done before and that was very nice and i think kept me i was thinking about it too because when you're traveling you get worn out but i also think you're sitting the entire time like you get in the uber to the airport you Sedentary. sit at the airport you sit in the plane you mm-hmm. there's like short the bursts of energy because yeah, you're doing but, the show yeah but even that is like a little bit of walking so i was like i wonder if i actually move my body a little and it helped a lot i think mm-hmm. but it's so weird to did you ever that. um work out with somebody else in there so many dude at the oh, um it sucks the, huh? the spokane one yeah or no tacoma wait yeah. spoken yeah no no spokane yeah <laughs> there it is found there, it uh, yeah, you're there but it was hugely busy and yeah. i was like and there's like an older guy who was like doing the free weights and doing so much more than i could ever do and i was like all right whatever yeah, that's why it sucks. It sucked a lot. You start but... judging yourself more when you're working out around somebody else. Oh yeah, and also like I'll like kind of hurt myself because I'll be trying to be like, I got this. I'm not going to struggle with it. <laughs> well, it's not a competition, Elliot. Go at your own pace. 
Um, is it not a competition? Unless there's other people in the hotel workout room with you. Who are hotter. Yes. Then it's a competition. Mm -hmm. That's pretty easy bar. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of hotter. Um, um, so Denver was great. Denver, Denver was so great. Super shout out the everybody was very kind at mm-hmm. the meet and greet after it was out on the sidewalk and oh man what was the name of the guy I think he posted on our Reddit but some dude just took everybody's pictures for him. Oh very yeah, sweet. he became like surrogate picture taker. Yeah, got the price of his ticket back too. <laughs> yeah, somebody on, gave him thirty tipping, bucks. Yeah. <laughs> it was very good. I'm bummed out I didn't get to like try out any of the uh, local Im- imbiberies. Imbiberies. In Oh, you mean the... Well, I did that, yeah, in uh, San Francisco. I went to that lounge that was a weed lounge. I stayed kind of clean. I had a little... Yeah, you weren't... I had some some vape stuff, but I stayed pretty clean because I was just like, you know, I just didn't want to peak anxiety already Mm -hmm. where it was, so... But I I was sad because Denver's so free that way, you know? They're they're so Mm -hmm. chill about it, so Mm -hmm. I'm sad I didn't get to... But yeah, there was that little, like, speakeasy for weed, basically, that was, like, right next to our hotel, which was... In San Francisco? In... Oh... Yeah, in San Francisco. Yeah. I guess that was San Francisco. Was kind of, yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, we were also educated on the nuts of the um, the horse at the Denver oh, yeah. airport. <laughs> Dude, that fucking horse. <laughs> that horse as you exit that the Denver airport. That frightening freaking Terrifying. horse. Well, it's interesting because I didn't even really know about it. And then as we were leaving... I think you were the one that said, look at its eyes, yeah, right? Yeah, and they were- Did you know about that? No, that they were glowing red. You just red. saw. Yeah. It's just this weird like nightmare horse. <laughs> it's just got these glowing red eyes. Yeah, it's like Who the headless that horseman's that... horse. <laughs> it totally is. <laughs> and then it's like just this demon horse welcoming you to Denver, and it's like, okay, cool. And then when we were at the show- Talking about the it. The fucking yeah. Denver locals were informing us that- that horse sculpture murdered its creator <laughs> yeah, by so, falling on him. And so then here's, him here's a photo of the terrifying horse. <laughs> uh, and then here's an article about how the Denver airport has become an icon of the Illuminati. Yeah, please. Um, okay, ever so since, that, the, ever yeah. since the DIA opened to the public on February 1995, after it's numerous delays and nearly $2 billion dollars over budget, the airport has been a hub not only for United and Frontier, but also for our nation's most salacious airport-themed conspiracy theories. Ooh. Demonic horse greeting visitors, the apocalyptic <laughs> murals, the involvement of the Freemasons, and the many other oddities relating to the airport and its construction have provided endless fodder for DIA truthers, hysteria mongers, and late night television hosts. Hysteria mongers. <laughs> it's my favorite well, band. I <laughs> would love to be a hysteria monger. <laughs> but a hysteria monger has to be someone that's like absolutely insane, right? I stand by. Like can you can you name a hysteria mong- monger? Like one like name one hysteria monger. Donald Trump. <laughs> And that's our podcast. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> yeah, the gargoyles. Like, yeah. As part of our walk around the airport, Montgomery stops in baggage <laughs> claim and looks upward toward a gargoyle that's sitting in a suitcase. Uh, to some of the conspiracy theorists, this is a harbinger, 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 harbinger of yeah, it is har- harbinger of something evil or nefarious. Montgomery says, but it's not. It's a fun piece of art. I look on the it's plaque. It's a fun piece of art. Says. Says Freemason uh-huh. Jenny. <laughs> yeah. Wait, get to the part about the skin lamps. I look on the plaque below the grotesque <laughs> and discovered the artist is Terry Allen. A few days later, I reach him at his home in Santa Fe. I was invited to make a proposal. This uh, was when Stapleton was still open, the old airport. Uh, we all met there, and I remember there being a committee that included airport people, art people, and even a nun. Right off, there was a religious aspect. What the there. hell? I remember seeing the murals on like a Reddit post years and years ago or something, but I didn't see them when we were in the airport. Is it just like a really, really big airport and we didn't see that part or something this is such a weird quote from the artist the artist who made the gargoyle when asked if he intended anything to be evil he says it's actually the opposite they're protectors gargoyles are good demons they face out from the church to keep the bad demons out if i was being malicious i could have been a lot more malicious than i was that's always a weird <laughs> justification. He's he's right though. Like what a rationale. Wait, I, I just so we know we're not spreading fake news from the Blue Mustang Wikipedia page that comes right up when you when That's you Google it. That's the kind it, of horse it is. Colored bright blue with illuminated glowing red eyes, it is notable both for its striking appearance and for having killed its creator Luis Jimenez <laughs> when a section of it fell on him at his studio. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it didn't. Oh, in his studio. It's a 32-foot horse with vibrant, gleaming red-orange eyes that greets travelers as causes some to have on-the-ground panic attacks, <laughs> usually reserved for T.I.'s notorious turbulence. Wow. I mean, why the red eyes, though? That's what I want to know. 
Because of its intense glare and imposing stature, the horse is a favorite target of crackpot theories, including the idea that it will provide transportation Jesus. for one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. <laughs> it's widely called Blucifer by fans and foes alike. I didn't notice it was blue, did you? Yeah, in the day. Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. Jesus, Jimenez was killed I in 2006 at the age of Blue 65 when funny. creating the sculpture when its head fell on him and severed an artery in his leg. That's some movie shit. Stop talking about what you were saying earlier. That's some scary. Yeah, movie. maybe mm. get another sculpture. Yeah, why did that still go out to the public? Like, we're like well, they didn't break the I sculpture's mean, leg, so. At this point, they can't change it, right? Because then it would be controversial if they did. I guess, and and his family helped finish it, so I guess it's kind of one of those, like, we did it because this is what he wanted. He wow. wanted a big evil horse to welcome everyone to Denver. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, 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 hold on, guys. Uh-oh. I'm going to read two paragraphs, <laughs> and I'm going to let you, I'm going to read it word for word. Damn, and I wish I could play that X-Files theme song, because I would right now. Things get, yeah, things get really intriguing when Horowitz sends me excerpts from said published material, Death in the Air. <laughs> In it, he discusses the murals as depicting genocide that particularly affects blacks and Hispanic people and dedicated <laughs> Sorry, oh I, was, boy. I was trying to play and dedicated track. by largely secret Masons. The Nazi alien symbolizes the Nazi fascist links between contemporary population controllers and the military petrochemical industrialists accountable for Hitler's rise to power, Horowitz writes. The capitalization punctuation and emphasis are his. Elite global industrialists, including the Rockefeller family in America and the royal family of England, were primarily responsible for eugenics. Eugenics, the first racial hygiene experiments pioneered in America against black and mentally retarded people. Via our emails, I ask if the funky artwork at DIA could just be coincidental. If it smells like a skunk and looks like a skunk, it's not a Gopher, he writes in an email, the elements here reflect the circumstances in current geopolitics. The images here make it pretty certain there is a commercial enterprise that relishes these images. Too many coincidences to not give a reasonable, intelligent investigator probable cause to conclude something more than coincidence. Tanjuma Tanguma is not a suspect. He's a witness. His art is evidence. Who paid for it and what their motivation for commissioning this precise pattern of images that tell a very clear story or something like that. This time he doesn't, very you strange. You said so many words and so many of them were like trigger words that I gotta, you gotta send me the link. Exactly. Nazi aliens? I gotta, I have no clue what you just said, but it's like, it sounded like you were Jose Canseco's Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of lost myself on how fast I was. Wow. Um, Holy crap. Reading, I wonder yeah. what Jose so. Canseco has to say about the <laughs> Denver airport. <laughs> he probably has a lot to say. He might, yeah. I'm gonna just tweet him and ask him. Oh man, how's he doing? He's, he really, man. So that was Denver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, anyway, then on to Salt, Salt Lake, Lake City. City. You, were, you got your first taste of snow yeah. on the trip, and you loved it. Man. It was so beautiful. Salt Lake's beautiful. I've been to Salt Lake City, though. Mm -hmm. I've been to Utah. Had it's you ever frequented place. the downtown? That was the first time I frequented the downtown, and the same I with Denver. So, yeah. Both were just so freaking yeah, clean. They yeah. felt big and they felt, you know, impressive, but also clean, which is not something that we necessarily get in the LAs and the New Yorks. Definitely not in the city. Mm -mm. Um, but uh, but gorgeous, gorgeous. The snow was absolutely beautiful. I mean, I loved it. Uh, yeah, I uh, wasn't enough of it though. No, and I made sure that I found some. And then when I went to go get my lunch from Steve that he postmates, I threw a snowball at his wall. <laughs> he did. He came into the hotel room <laughs> really? with great. a snowball. <laughs> Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was um, the first throw ball, snowball, th throw ball, th snow, <laughs> throw ball fight. D fast forward to Spokane. Steve decides to throw a freaking <laughs> snowball for the first time in his life, it and really tries to like be funny and cute. This was Salt Lake, huh? This was Salt Lake. No, this was that Spokane. was Spokane, the yeah. one where he nailed you on the back of the yeah. neck. Yeah. So Steve's like <laughs> trying. No, that's Salt. Lake. That was Spokane for sure. It was outside of the Salt Lake Club. You're wise right. Guys. He's right. And then you did it again and spoke. No. <laughs> No, you're right, Elliot. Yeah, oh, yeah, so that's true. That, I threw right, the first right. one at your wall, and I hit the wall because that's what I was trying to hit. So Steve playfully throws one at my backpack? Well, you hit me again when we were there. And then you, we you have fun. while we were looking at the uh, the club, <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, "All right, well I now I gotta, well now I gotta get you." So I threw it right at his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Just exploded a big it old ice really ball. Really painful. <laughs> yeah, you handled it really well, Joe. Because I wouldn't have handled it, dude. My thought process was literally this: "Ow, what the fuck? I'm pissed." Steve's laughing. 
<laughs> Steve didn't mean to do that. Steve was a hundred percent throwing somewhere else, oh, and yeah, he no. hit me in the neck. No and I was way. like, you didn't mean to hit me either, did you? And he's like, nope. No, I just wanted to hit you in the back, and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Salt Lake City show uh, was a show. <laughs> it was a, it was fine. Technically, right? it was the roughest, which I think got in our heads. Yeah. yeah, I think it was still good. It was just a different type of crowd, and I think the crowd was just a little bit more subdued. It was an open club. Like it almost felt like a conference room. It was still mm-hmm. nice though, and the staff was very, very sweet and helped us out with everything. Uh, but yeah, we just the, the um, we went from Denver, which was just rowdy town. Yeah. Also, show. it was a holiday. It was Martin and, Luther King Day, so a lot of people didn't have work, and it was also no. Just, this was Tuesday. This no, was, no. The um the Denver was yes. Monday, oh, okay, gotcha, and then gotcha. Salt Lake being on a Tuesday at seven thirty mm-hmm. was it's just a tough. That's a tough. Was that and freezing? It's hard to get people out. Was yeah. that the show where Joe was farting like so many times backstage? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. was great. That was so fun. From around the corner, it was enough. <laughs> <laughs> that was the funniest <laughs> shit because he had far- he was farting so much, and then f- we're all sitting quietly in the back, and then you just hear Aww. like a That's fart. Really good. That's very accurate. Yeah. Yeah. You look out the door, and no one's there. <laughs> yeah, so, so it was almost like I excused myself goblin. from <laughs> them all because uh, it was at the point where you know I hit the tipping point. The tipping point is this: Steve just keeps laughing, and he's at uncontrollable. But I know it's starting to get to Elliot tipping point i'm like i gotta excuse myself from the room which makes it funnier yep. for you it's always funnier it's like it reminds me of being in church as a kid and something funny happens and you're not supposed to laugh yeah, yeah. and you're holding it and and you know you're in trouble or like someone else is annoyed by it like it's already funny but when elliot gets mad at it it makes it even funnier. i don't think i got mad i think i just was like no you didn't get mad but i could tell you were done <laughs> like it was enough that you were well, yeah done. but i also get done you could have not been doing that and i could have <laughs> Still, you could have been done. I get pre-show done. But they were hanging out in the room. In the the room, you exit it, and there's a hallway. So, but you can't see into the hallway from the room. So, what I started doing is that I would run up to the door to where they couldn't see me, and I would fart really loud, and then I would run yeah, away, and they would poke funny. their head out. And I wouldn't. Be the fact that you weren't there made it extra special. Yeah, it was good. And then the show was. There were some technical difficulties in the beginning. That's what happened. That's there were a right. lot of technical difficulties because their tech person, God bless them, didn't. We just had have a lot a of computer. cues. And they just no practice. They weren't yeah. set up for like no, they're not show that, tech yeah. stuff. They were probably mm-hmm. just like, we're gonna we have a playlist of songs and we're gonna hit play and shuffle it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but we gave them our list of eight eight tracks for our show mm-hmm. with like a script on where to People, play those tracks. It went it it ended up being great, mm-hmm. a great show, but I think the rhythm up top what there was very difficult for us to find the the groove. Yep. It was one of those yeah. that because it was so truncated, it was like as it was happening, like what's are we doing it right? What's happening? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was very yeah. surreal. And I think well, it was, yeah, it started us off on a weird stumbly foot with the audience. Uh-huh. Luckily, nobody really cared. No, no, no not I think all. everyone had a great time. Everybody was very forgiving. All the clubs were it's very also more nice fun too, to see be- messes sometimes. Yeah, sorry, because well, I think like we even said it from the top. You know, it's we're not this typical. All these clubs are stand-up clubs, and what we're doing, which is kind of like this bastardization of a variety show. I'd say it's a variety. I mean, yeah. you have song, sketch, and stand-up, and Q Q&A. and A. So I think that's yeah. pretty variety. I say we take a little break, read our ads, and then we'll move on to the final well, great. shows. Great, and then we'll great, oh, we'll great, see what great, happens. great, okay. great. <laughs> Sounds great. All right, who wants to go first? Cue up a track. Here we I'll go. I'll go first. Okay, you go first, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the ad portion of this show. We've been doing a new thing sometimes where we go outside and make silly ad reads. This isn't one of those because we just got back and we're going to do it right here. Got to get this podcast right up. now with you. My phone is freezing. AT and T is not as good. Okay, well then I'm up, guys. Between hitting the gym, eating, is this? This is like uh, <laughs> what is that? The, the Scorpion. What the hell is that movie? Hero. Drive. Yeah. Oh, it is like drive. Yeah. <laughs> Between hitting the Scorpion. gym, eating cleaner, or learning a new skill, there's a lot of ways we can better ourselves in the new year. For example, Elliot and I have not been drinking for like a month now, and that's it feels great. True. But Congratulations, I can't think... you guys. I'm proud of you. Shut Thank up. You. I'm doing an ad read. But I can't think of one that's more important than <laughs> He's starting. He's also drunk as shit. The year off. <laughs> <laughs> Tackling high interest credit card debt. <laughs> 
My friends at Upstart.com are here to help. Upstart is the revolutionary lending platform that offers smarter rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually, Thank God. Yeah, right? They reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. Oh. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. Thank you, Upstart. Thank you. They believe in you. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate. All of those words were very capitalized, so you know it's true. <laughs> Since it's just a soft pull, it won't affect your credit score, which is dope. The hard pull happens if you accept your rate. The best part? Once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. The next day! It's crazy. That was italicized, so that meant... It really meant it sounds like Talisman. Yeah. Over 400,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of a high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. That is that's true. When you take all that debt and you put it into one thing that you do every month, it's uh, it's very it's very nice. So see why Upstart is ranked number one in the category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash valleycast to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash valleycast. Very nice, Joe. That's really cool. And do after it. you do that, you might work up a bit of an appetite. But what if it's 9 p.m. and you don't really feel like going out, but you still want a little bit of sushi? Well, mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you about Postmates, ladies and gentlemen. For when you want that sushi at 9, that red wine at 4, or that breakfast burrito at 8 a.m., and that ibuprofen at 10 a.m., and that tacos at 1 p.m., and that ramen at 8.30 p.m., you get where I'm going with this. Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever kind of delivery service all year round. It's wonderful. I love it. You know this i use it all the time i'm addicted to it it's a problem anything you're craving postmates can deliver they're the largest on-demand network in the u.s and offer delivery from all of the restaurants grocery stores and convenience stores and traditional retailers you could possibly want or need it's also a fun and easy way to try out new types of food new restaurants local joints things like that and not leave uh the house and see what they have to offer it's very fun you can experiment with it 24 hours a day 365 days a year postmates will bring what you need bring you what you need within the hour no more trips to the store and you don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything for you. They take care of it and they say hi to you and they're nice and then they give you a bag of all your treasures. Download the app for iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery in real time. You see the little car coming. It's very cute. And then you watch as they approach you with your treasures. For a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. To start your free deliveries, download the app and use the code VALLEYCAST. That helps you, it helps your stomach, and most importantly, it helps us. And that's what this is all about as far as an ad goes. That's code VALLEYCAST for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Anything you need, anytime you need it, Postmate it, download Postmates, and save with the code VALLEYCAST. Nice work, Elliot. Yeah, that felt nice. That, that was, was nice. That my was reading uh, eyes are on. What did you search? What? For this music, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to gloss over Elliot's <laughs> reading eyes. <laughs> uh, I like just a, it's like the faucet <laughs> was still dripping, but it was uh, just, my just reading bullshit. eyes are on. Um, I just searched for synth. Nice, and it's then good. I found like a compilation called I dig it. Retro Wave. Mm. Hey guys, love is in the air, huh? Well, someone grab the Lysol. <laughs> Just kidding. Even though this is a made-up holiday, it's still really cute, isn't it? It's also the perfect Every time. Every holiday is a made-up holiday. <laughs> Good point. That's a great point. It's also the perfect time to show this special someone how much you care, huh? And say those three words everyone wants to hear. Match, Match my, my undies. undies. Me Undies has the most adorable Valentine's Day prints to get all lovey-dovey this year. And don't worry if you don't have a boo. Me Undies also makes buddy ba buddy bands so you can match with your pet. Which is honestly more important than people, if you think about that. Hey, guys. Roses are red and violets are blue. Your butt is cute. God dang it. <sighs> MeUndies has loungewear, wear, guys. The rumor has it that those loungewear you can wear out and, out and about. about. Keep your, your eyes peeled, peeled for, for some cozy new additions. additions. Me Undies, Me Undies has, has a, a great, great offer, offer for my. <laughs> for my. Yeah, any first time. Not... If you're a first, first time, time purchaser, you get 15% off. And free, free shipping. shipping. 
That's a no-brainer, especially because we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So guys, get your me undies, all right? 15% off your first pair. Free shipping. And a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash Valley. That's MeUndies.com slash Valley. Did you guys get your new undies? Yeah, I did. I did too. I got some hard undies. I got tacos with got hot tacos? sauce. Damn, I got hard. Wait, hmm? That's, that's the print on my undies. Good for you. And then I got some socks that also have tacos with hot sauce. It's like a little hot sauce bottle. Thank you, MeUndies. It's <laughs> <was> fucking cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And scene. So that's the end of that. Salt Lake yeah. City. That was great. Salt Lake City was great. Uh, and then the, Spokane. Spokane. Spokane was a oh, wonderful Spokane. crowd. They were great. They were hilarious. They were goofballs. They My were, heart goes their out antics to Spokane. were nuts. Spokane. Great security guy who took all the photos for us. Yeah. You had friends there. He was great. Fun show. Silly well, show. I missed that part because I, I it was Spokane where oh, I got yeah. very ill. That's when the uh, Steve Pocalypse happened. Dude. The self fulfilling prophecy of I'm gonna be stressed out the whole trip and now I'm sick. <laughs> Dude, it was and, and it was. It Weird. was totally stress levels opening up my immune system for all <laughs> any and all. It fucking... was right when the tour turned into Steve being sick with something and then me and Joe were gonna be like, I feel great, you feel great, I feel great. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we got to explore. Well, I'm glad it was only one of us. And I and I uh, Yeah, and you haven't gotten me sick for, I was worried I was gonna catch something from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't. I tried my best Fingers to crossed. stay away and uh and not you know, be around you guys too mm-hmm. much when I when I was sick, but um, man, Spokane, um, Riverfront Park, the Riverfront Park. Yeah, we <sighs> went and frolicked in the snow. It was Joe, very nice. Joe gave us a little. As soon as we went to the hotel, Joe was like, "Man, I mean, he, we were just like the the Uber ride from the from the plane to the or from the airport to the hotel minutes was just Joe going like, that's where I first that and that's where I did this and that's where I, and it was it was really cute and it was really sweet mm-hmm. and then um, that's Joe, the bridge where I threw a dummy off in a Baratza Beretta video <laughs> that's right and then he showed it to us and it's so funny it was a great video um, but then we went to Riverfront Park and wow it was just gorgeous it was just winter wonderland just snow everywhere it's the, just the beautiful waterfall the river oh, and all that, that waterfall. So cool. yeah and you guys saw it's it gorgeous. like ducks it's, you remember those ducks those ducks yeah. with just... those hobos accosting them mm-hmm. yeah. it's like get out of the way hobos oh yeah that was weird and then that big red wagon thing that we slid that was down, weird that too. was nice yeah that's art yeah it was just a lovely little thing and then you we know met about the, the illuminati uh... conspiracies around <laughs> that red wagon yeah, did you see the nuts on yeah, it yeah killed yeah, the guy that uh Built it. Yeah. <laughs> killed the guy that made that horse one. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, we met the trash goat. Yeah. Which was really cool. Garbage goat. Garbage the garbage goat. goat. Show yeah. Some <laughs> 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 Sorry. But uh, it was one. It's just this sculpture of a goat that you press a button and then you could just feed sucks it up trash. your trash. <laughs> <laughs> which is actually a really fun way to make people <laughs> fucking clean up their trash. Yeah. I love it. Super I smart. Would, if I would spend hours. Just gathering trash to throw into the goat's <laughs> mouth, pretty much. If that was around here, and that's something they should build around here. Well, it was very fun, sweet, like family-oriented, mm-hmm. like thing that w- promotes like disposing of garbage. And then as we were walking away, Steve goes, "You think a dick's been in that?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said, "Yeah, definitely." Yeah. 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 Which you think anyone's put a turd in there? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely would put <laughs> a turd in there. <laughs> Human turd? Yeah. Huh. Oh, no, I wouldn't put a human turd in there. <laughs> I would put a dog turd in there, though. You wouldn't try to poop into it while it's on? <laughs> oh, man. Imagine what that would look like, knowing what it is. Yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of core strength. <laughs> you just get stuck. Uh, and then we went to Boo Radley's. Yeah, Boo Radley's. Which little, was super cool. Yeah, it's one of those like gift shops, like uh, unique, kitschy. Yeah, little toys gift and, shop. and yeah. such. It's and like then, a Spokane institution. Man, last night I took a... So Grace will get, hide little miniature hands, finger hands, mm. and yeah. stuff, and we'll hide it back and forth, a little cute thing. And I got one of the min- the smaller ones at Boo Radley's. Like super tiny. Super tiny, and I was like, I'm going to put this in the microwave and pretend <laughs> that it's <laughs> oh, no. been, that it shrunk in the microwave. And um, <laughs> I did it last night, and I was like, oh, my God, what the? I left this in here. Look, and Grace is like, oh. She's like, yeah. Um, huh. She's like, I guess it shrunk. Either shrunk or that's a different one. Anyway, I'm gonna go, <laughs> and I like, 
<laughs> she didn't give you the satisfaction. Didn't, didn't of your care bit. at all. I was like, Ugh. it's be it f- crazy if this thing shrunk perfectly in the Ugh. microwave. That would never happen. <laughs> she didn't give it. You should bake it into a cupcake. Uh huh. And then <laughs> I have the glow in the dark one that I have yeah, next to my thing. Nice. I'm waiting in the middle of the night to just put on her. You could just tie a little string face. to it and then like put it above the bed. Yeah, Joe said tape it above the bed. <laughs> yeah, have it just right when she gets it. It's just dangling. glowing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah. So yeah, and then we did some shopping in there, which is really sweet. And then we went to a another, another Irish, Irish pub. That was and our then, thing, Irish pubs. Let's get some good stew yeah, and that shepherd's was very good. pie. And that's when I was like. I'm not done. doing good. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I need to go to the hotel and I need to go to sleep. And then I did. And when I woke up, I was like, "Fuck, I'm sick." And so yeah. I texted the guys and I was like, "I'm fucking sick, you guys." And there wasn't a thought that I was gonna like cancel the show or anything like that. But we would have wheeled you out. Yeah, you did the right thing by not doing the meet and greets, though. I know. I feel so bad about mm-hmm. it though because I, I just that's such a fun part and. Dude, again, shout out to the uh, the people that attended these shows and the fans because as soon as Steve said, "I'm sorry, everybody, I can't do it," nobody complained. I know everybody everyone said, said feel we understand, and... and then everybody was still super kind when it was yep. just you and me. And yeah, it was like we didn't miss a beat, and it's because we have the best fans in the world. And when I went outside to to grab an Uber, there were these nice um, fans that were like, "Do you need a ride? We'll give you a ride if you want." And I was like, that's so sweet of you, but you I am... finished peeing and then zipped up your pants. Yeah, I did. You put and, the uh, turd in the goat and you went on your way. <laughs> <laughs> Alana, I call her the goat. Yeah. Uh, oh, but no. no. But uh, most girlfriend of all time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so the I was like, no, I don't want to get you guys sick. You know, I don't want it because I mean, whatever it was, it was fucking miserable. Like I, I can't remember if it was that morning or the next morning. I woke up and I was just like. I'd never felt I think it was the morning after so yeah. awful. Yeah, I just I went into the shower and I just turned it as hot as it could go <sighs> and it just stayed in there and then I slowly like crumbled to my feet or to my knees and then I just like laid down on the tile in the bathroom I've and just done that. let yeah. the hot water hit me and then I just started crying. <laughs> oh <laughs> and no. Like, and, and, and then Lana comes in and she's like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "If I feel this way in an hour, I'm going to the hospital." Because I never felt that kind of fucking. I'm not even kidding. It was like what a weird bug you got. Fucked me up. Yeah, you rallied though. You rallied for both Did my shows, best, man. And you killed it in all, both of them. And that Spokane show is the one other than San Francisco where we did compliment bullies live. I know, which, which is, is an energetic run around the stage, get volunteers type thing. Which after the Spokane show, I was like, hell yeah, we could do this for the rest of my life. I really enjoyed it. Good, it yeah, really I love fun. that. And we, yeah, that's when Eggs came out. And then I picked a girl who um, <laughs> later informed us, a, a young woman that she had just beaten cancer which yeah. was a very beautiful yeah. story and then we made her say that she was a dick on <laughs> yeah. stage or what did we, yeah, no, piece of shit i'm a piece and of a shit boner. and i'm a boner we made yeah we made her say i'm a boner on stage after yeah. <laughs> there was a there was also a woman at the salt lake show that said she was she had beaten cancer yeah, yeah. That's she cool. her and her yeah. son uh her, yeah. yeah yeah she worked at the at the place as well. Speaking yeah. of emotional things, Joe, do you want to mention the message we got that you sent to us? Oh yeah, let's end on that. Oh yeah. Let's start, yeah. let's let's end on that. Okay, yeah, we'll come back to that. Um, that was very beautiful. Yeah. S- uh s- so yeah, and then um uh Spokane was wonderful and then and then finally to Tacoma. Mhm. Which was uh it was bittersweet. That was the fastest. They were amazing. Yeah. That was, was the fastest leg of the trip. It was like land, get to the hotel like for four like a hours couple hours, or something. perform, yep. go to bed and leave. It was so fast. I know, I tried to get Blur. some more sleep in and then, you know, and then we went to uh we we did the show. And uh and and that club had the Statler and Waldorf yeah. Muppets, oh, yeah. which was yeah. really really fucking cool. And we thought no crowd, not to compare. But no crowd was going to beat that Denver crowd, and Tacoma was like a rock. Concert. They were great. Yeah, that they was were amazing. insane. I love that we had that guy sitting to our right that was just like On responding stage. to everything. The that Lincoln we seats. Yeah, he lo- Lincoln seats. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, the Lincoln, the Lincoln box. Yeah. But he uh, he loved the Source Fed song because we we used the Source Fed intro music as our intro. Oh great! And he was like, "Oh my god, that's crazy!" So at least it worked on one on yeah. one person pretty well, but uh, yeah, it was such a good show. And then I saw my friend Nicole, who I grew up with in Oxnard, and uh, that was great. And then um, 
fucking load it up on emergency and tea, and then fucking off we go, and we were done with the tour. Yeah, we can't understate how messed up Steve was with those last two days. He was literally asleep five minutes before every show on the couch. He would sit down, and he would just die, and he'd start snoring, and he'd be like, "We're we're about to go on. And he would again. He got up and he rallied, and it was great. And yeah, good job, Steve. Thank Cocaine you. was a yeah, man. Hell of a. I know it was the only way. Yeah, yeah. there. I remember Elliot when Elliot did was did his stand up on this last one and the at the spo- or at the um, Tacoma show. I was like, do it, do go as long as you want. Yeah, just go. And I, instead, I, I completely forgot. <laughs> <a ton laughs> of material. Yeah, <laughs> that was the best part. Steve was like, I gotta. I got a shit. Yeah. Do you I was think, like, do you think, do you think I, have I have time? I was like, well, based on what he did all the other shows, yeah, you're totally fine. Go for <laughs> I it. Didn't have time. And then <laughs> I was thinking, and then I was like, Andy, I said go long, so he'll probably yep. go long. Yeah. Nope. And I intended then, to, and then I was like, huh, this seems to have gone by faster. Dude, and then I got off stage like, oh crap, I forgot. My, I had a whole bit on the drugs bit that yeah. I was going to talk about, and it didn't. And in Spokane, I wish that was fell out of my brain. Great. Yep. I, I wish you could have seen though, because backstage, I like open the the backstage or open the green room door. And uh, Joe has my moo moo, and he's like, "Go, you're up!" And I'm like, "Holy shit!" It was like an like, SNL change. I'm throwing it over yeah. his head, and I'm like, out. "I can't find the arms." I'm ah, fuck. <laughs> 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 uh, so good, but it was a great show, man. Yeah, Everybody was awesome. Everyone did great. I think we did great, especially as we got used to the material. Your uh, your Queen song, yeah. with oh, the automaton, yeah, just every remains time. the stupidest. <laughs> yeah. it's, so stupid. it's so dumb, and I don't even think that when we came out with the ribbons and the moves on, no one gives a shit. Yeah, no, oh, it's, it's so, such a good moment. It's already so, it's a great moment, but it doesn't. Man. Everyone's already along for the ride. It's yeah. a very good. It just adds to the ridiculousness of it. Yeah, Ellie and I are just backstage while you're doing that because it's different every freaking time. <laughs> laughing our asses really off. Yeah. Laughing out really loud. Done. Just like, oh man. It was one of those, uh, yeah, I think the combination of, and the variety of things we did with also a lot of people who were not familiar with us, there was a universal feeling of people being like, no, we're like new fans. We are, we get it. You're hilarious. And which was a very good feeling. Uh, Cause it's one thing to do it for people who know us and that makes the inside jokes all the more fun. But the people who had blank slates, good, good feedback. Yeah. Is so great. Which is always the best compliment. It you is know? the best compliment, and it and it was great too. The people that don't know who we were that were like, "What was that instrument? I want it! Like, yeah. what's it called? How do you do that? What is it?" That's fun. I like it. We had a great time. Great time. Great job, guys. Um, and then Joe sent us a very lovely, beautiful um message. Yeah, Joe. Um, yeah, I don't know how best to go about it. Um, yeah, I don't know what the appropriate. Whatever well, Joe you think was going goes. through Patreon messages uh, like a sweetie, and and just kind of like you know catching up on things and and uh, doing a little housekeeping and here and, and there. And, this and every once in a while, Joe will send us like his you know some really sweet ones for us all to read, and he'll just paste them in our text thread and stuff. And then Joe sent us this particularly um, emotional. Yeah, this message. was posted Very emotional. on the community tab of our Patreon. So. It's kind of out there. Um, Should you leave out names? Is that the most appropriate? I don't know. I mean, he signed it with his name. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I want to give a shout out to Ken Paget, who uh, recently just uh, experienced one of the, the hardest things um, a father can experience. But he wrote to us and said, um, my son Kirk... I think K-I-R-K-E would be Kirk, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kirk was a was a patron of the Valley folk. And yesterday he lost his battle with leukemia because of severe complications. He was 19 years old. And over the last year or so, he grew to love the Valley folk and even binge watch the old source fed videos. Uh, we would talk about our favorites and we watched and voted for the Valley folk during bring the funny as he recovered from his first stem cell transplant. Um, he was constantly wearing his Valley Folk shirt and hoodie as he went from treatments and traveled back out of state hoping that the second stem cell transplant would be the cure uh, they were praying for. Sadly, it was not to be, but they helped provide some good memories for me and my son. Uh, thank you, Elliot, Joe, Steve, and also Lee for the laughs and silliness you provided him and continue to create now. It was a great distra- distraction from the scariest scariness of uh, real life. Um, so we just wanted to say thank uh, give Ken our condolences mm-hmm. and uh, thank you for sharing such a very beautiful, beautiful and bittersweet memory. And uh, from us to you, we just want to we just want to give you and your family all the love that that we possibly can in this moment. Yeah, very yeah. beautiful. It was like knocked me on my uh, butt for a little bit when you said it. it was like Sunday or Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, 
yeah, we're thinking about you and your family, Ken. And uh, yeah, thank you for for sharing a piece of yourself with us. Yeah, it means a lot. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So. Um. Well, thank you, Joe, for reading that. Thank mm-hmm. you for sharing that with us. And um, it's a uh, you know it's a hard part of life, and uh, got to move on and try to make funny things and try to entertain people and are you trying to end on a more up up note <laughs> yeah <we>? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. trying to no. cl- climb out of it <laughs> yeah well i think that's a, i think we can segue yeah. abruptly yeah. there's yeah. no way of getting out of that well yeah. there's a bunch of just you know we segue with a bunch of thanks and uh and and just gratefulness there's a lot for of everybody. that kind of stuff it came it's interesting that that came on the tail end of the tour because there's so many stories like that of, of meeting people mm-hmm. yeah uh and then it's just a reminder of like oh yeah we we do we do and have done stuff that has gotten into people's dna on a level that is like insane to think of, and our own dna and uh it's also nearing 10 years of doing this which yeah. is just sort of like and there's still people supportive of it so yeah. that's and it's very still, very cool and it's and it's continuously even at this point after doing it for so long it's so energizing when you meet people that you know that fairly collectively all say that we've helped them get through some hard times and our comedy helps them get through tough shit and tough things and um it's so energizing as a comedian as someone that you know that that's all I want to do is make people laugh and help people through rough times with the stupid things that come out of my dumb brain and come out of our dumb brains together collectively and um it's just a um, it's a great reminder when we meet people and face to face and they all have some kind of story and it's so wonderful to to meet everybody and and you know to round out this whole thing where we were talking a lot about our Feel, our personal feelings on the tour and stuff. I really do want to end it on the on the note that I'm so thankful for everybody who came and the patrons and you know even if you didn't come and you're listening to this and you wish you could have come or you're waiting for us to go to your city at some point. We appreciate you and we thank you for listening to our stuff and watching our stuff and sharing our stuff if you do and being a patron and all that and it's just it's a wonderful, weird thing that I'm very thankful for, that we're all very thankful for. And, um, you know, we hope to just keep doing it into the foreseeable future. And, and, you know, as long as you guys are sticking around and you're here with us, we'll be, we'll be here doing the same old thing if we can, you yeah. know, I, like my, my whole thing. And I put in that Instagram post is I just feel grateful right now. So I want to say thanks to Ken, the patrons, everybody that came. I want to say thank you to the clubs, uh, Comedy Works, uh, Spokane Comedy Club, Tacoma Comedy Club, Wise Guys, Wise Guys, and Sketchfest for having us and and putting up with and and letting us do our weird show, mm-hmm. which was great. Um, everybody we met and interacted with um, on the trip, I got to see uh, again, seeing all my friends and from the past. And uh, thank you to you guys for working so hard, and uh, also my wife Likewise. for holding down um, the family. Um, and not letting them out into public while yeah, I was holding gone. them down yeah, hard, keeping them under the blanket the whole time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you to everybody listening to this. And yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, thank you guys. Well, we'll catch you guys next time on the Valley Cast, huh? Where is the? Where is the? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where's the cat? There it is. Oh, I was too loud. <laughs> <laughs>